Look at me, look at me, look at me, I'm getting painted, I'm getting painted, I'm getting painted! <sighs> Nobody knows the troubles I've seen Nobody knows my sorrows <clears throat> Hey Igor oh, oh, hello master What do you say we paint you? What? That's right Let's give you some paint. Starting off, Rackarth Flesh. Citadel base color. Now, um, for those of you who don't know, I usually like to thin my paints down before I start painting. Um, in my wet palette, and it's always usually good to do that, but I figured that uh, Igor here won't mind if I just paint straight from the pot, because um, I've noticed that when you when you uh, when, or when I the Universal Collective view, when I paint large areas of model. Let's zoom out a little. And um, they're all the same color. Then the paint kind of naturally, the new paint range anyway, kind of naturally thins itself out because you move it around on the model. At least some of them do. Like this Rackarth Flesh, which is supposed to be the new Deneb Stone, does it. With the old foundation paints, like my favorite color, Deneb Stone, um, you, if, if you paint it straight out of the pot like this, it would get really thick and clumpy. I'm so happy! <clears throat> Shh, Igor, I'm talking. Oh, sorry, monster. So instead, um, I've noticed that when doing large surface areas like this, that the... Yeah, like, kind of pretty much right out of the bottle. If anything, you might want to dip your brush into a little... Uh, a cup of water first, just to make the color a little bit more fluid. But I mean, seriously, compared to the old Deneb Stone, and I love me some Deneb Stone. All of you who've seen my previous tutorials know that. But it was so thick straight out of the pot. You really had to um, thin that sucker down. So. This is much more manageable. Master, this is the happiest day of my life. That's good. I'm so happy. I'm gonna paint it. Yeah, you know. Been, I've been looking at you, Igor, behind the camera, you know, working the camera, and um, just been thinking, you know, you're such a good manservant. You always fetch me my paints when I need them, and you are just a nice and pleasant crit ghoul. Fun to be around. You're great when we go sing karaoke, or karaoke, as they call it, on other parts of the world that's not Hawaii or has an Asian demographic that knows how to pronounce it correctly. You always sing good songs and pick all my favorite rock ballads. But I know how much you like to sing the old standards, Master. Yep. And I figured, well, since I don't pay you, really, the least I could do to say thank you, to show my appreciation, 
is to give you the paint job that I've been promising you all these months. Well, Master, I must say that I'm very pleased and I promise that I will never again eat another one of your cats. What did you say? Nothing. I said, I think you look very fetching in that hat. <clears throat> I'm not wearing a hat. Oh. Oh, this guy's gonna be so much fun. This little, this little guy up here, paint up. So the thing is, when you're painting these big surface areas, it's really easy to just slap paint on and get kind of careless with it. So you really want to make sure that your paint is smoothly painted on. Get rid of any paint streaks that you can before the bugger starts to dry. And um, yeah, make sure that the paint streaks are gone. You've got smooth, uh, even coverage. We call it even coverage. But the Crip Ghoul, using my Warhammer or Warboss Tave standard for my ghouls, if you haven't seen my earlier videos, you should check them out because that's the kind of standard I'm going to be painting them to. Is really, it's really easy to paint them in, um, paint them this one major color. Rackard Flesh, this tan, beige, uh, creamy kind of color, and then do a lot of magic with the washes and with um, separate colors later. So we just got to really make sure that all the colors are evenly painted on. We have even coverage. All right, players, we are going to let Igor dry a little bit, and then we'll come right back and get to work on um, before we get to the washes, really, we're going to get to work on picking out some details like the metal ring and um, the, the, the fur, patches of fur and all that other stuff. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. All right, players, now that Igor is dry with his um, rack art flesh, we are going to get to work on painting the shades on now. This is the first time that I'm going to be doing a massive combination shade job with the new paint range. It used to work really great with um, the old washes, but we'll see. So your two colors are going to be Caraburg Crimson and Drukai Violet. And the main one is going to be Reikland Flesh Shade. So we're going to start with that. And we're going to let that dry first. Now very, very important what I just said. We're going to let that dry before mixing and matching with the other two colors. Now, um, I am using a bigger size brush to do this. And please don't mind how uh, beat up this brush is. It's uh, been through a lot with me. Oh, I said we are going to paint the fur first, didn't I? You know what, that's okay. We'll get to the washes and then we'll come back and we'll do, we'll do the other details, like I said. So first things first, you never want to... Just like with the old washes, you want to make sure that the washes don't end up pooling in any one area. At the same time, though, you want to make sure that there is enough on the surface area that it spreads naturally into the cracks and the crevices that the old wash washes used to do. If you have ogre and flesh wash from the old range, then that would be the one you use right now. So that is way too much wash. I just wanted to get it out onto the model. 
<laughs> We're the tickles master. So we are just going to spread it out so it doesn't end up pooling in any one area. And um, the great thing with this, because it's such a neutral brown color, um, we can really paint any part of the model with this. The bones, the, um, you know, the, these protrusions sticking out from his back. It's okay because we can go back over them in just a little bit. Gonna catch those pools before they they dry, and then it's gonna be like leaving you large water stains to try and clean out. So always, 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 while you're painting, just be very conscious of where the shades are drying. You want you want it to look natural, or as natural as a giant eight foot tall monstrosity like Igor can be and you want to move the shade along so it doesn't puddle unless it's deep in the recesses where that kind of shadowing that kind of shading is expected I like to paint my vampire counts up as very dark gothic and I know I or I think most people out there agree So there, there's a difference though between, you know, dark gothic and just annoyingly dark. Because if you just are going for a dark effect and you just slap all this shade on, it's going to muck up all the detail and then we don't see the awesome paint job that you did. And I'm just getting this Raglan flesh shade on everything just so that I can like it's it's a little bit easier for my eye later on to be able to pick out details. It's more motivating too, yeah? I think it is. As a painter, when you see more being done, like this wash or these shades, the old washes. Like, oh, they're like talent in a pot. Sorry about that. Monster, did you forget to turn your phone off before we started recording? Yeah, I guess I did. <gasps> oh, that's not very good, Monster. That's very bad. Yeah. That's very, very bad. There's not much else that. All I can think of that would be worse than leaving your phone on when you're recording. Yep. Sorry about that, Igor. In fact, that is so bad that I, I don't think I've ever heard of anything in the history of all histories that is quite as bad as leaving your telephone on while you're recording a YouTube painting tutorial. Alright, alright, Igor. Are you, um, are you trying to hit at something? No! No, of course not. Well, I'm just saying that if there was something that was even more horrible and terrible than leaving your cell phone on when you're filming a video, it would probably be dating a beautiful wood elf who used to be a high elf 
and then putting your evil into her tummy and then making a baby grow. Igor, I'm not even going to pretend that I know what you're talking about. All right. You're just going to keep washing and shading. And I am just going to forget that those words came out of your mouth. Yeah, it's fine. Now comes the hardest part, waiting. So Igor is nice and shaded. Now we wait. See you in a little bit. Right, now that it's dry, we're gonna paint bolt gun metal onto the ring around uh, Igor's head. What is this thing, Igor? That's why I keep on my knickknacks. You know, so I don't forget what I put it later on. Right. Now we're going to paint his fur or hair. And Igor, can you pass me the dryad bark, please? No, yeah, master. I'm being painted. Oh. So you are. So you So we're going to paint his hair dry and bark. <laughs> oh, stop it.
right. Next, we are going to paint his claws, his nails, and his uh, the talons on his feet. Mechanicus Standard Gray. Now you may have um, glued your Igor together to be holding different a different weapon or to uh, look a different way and most of these techniques will fit no matter what your Igor looks like. Sorry about that. Um, I, I finished painting up the gray spikes, and then what I did was I actually went back over now that I can tell what the color skin is, and I painted the, uh, all the bone colors with Rackarth flesh. So that's all the bones, um, the skulls on his back, the bones he's using as a weapon, if you're using a weapon, um, any skulls, like the ones around his neck, any, any, any pieces of bone, we're gonna bring that up to that nice creamy Rackarth flesh color. And if you can, try to keep some of that Raiklin flesh shade in the uh, recesses. But now we're really starting to, you know, diverge. Have the colors like split from each other. So our basic, basic color, our neutral color is kind of this cream, creamy white. And then, um, like the teeth and painting back up in Rackard flesh and then all the bones like I said and then it becomes darker like the skin shade with the Raikland flesh shade added um, let's see so the last thing last thing we're gonna do today after you paint back all your bone is um, I'm gonna give you a second to do that while I move on to the next step we're going to paint the bones with a Grax earth shade and we are going to paint the spike beads, all of the spikes, talons, claws, with known oil. We're going to bring those down. So known oil and Agrax Earthshade are like your the new Bada Black and um, Devlin Mud. So you'll be using them a lot. Please don't be distracted by my 
horrible looking brush. Oh, I remember the time I spilt my known oil all over my table. I do. I was manning the camera. So no oil for any of the grays. Gray parts like the spikes popping out the back. Talons, nails, claws. And then um, Agrax Earthshade for all the bone. I tried, I used to paint the bone of my vampire counts, you'll remember. I used to shade that with Bada Black. But with this new known oil, the look is just not the same. And it seems to make it a lot more like the finish looks a lot, I think, I don't know how else to say it, but cloudy. It looks a lot cloudier is the word if that makes any sense. It just has this weird like cloudy look to it, like dusty and muted. Whereas before, the Bada Black was really good at just tying the color down. So I used a little bit of Agrax Earthshade instead and found out that it works really well. And I really like it. So that's going to be our last step, is putting on this Agrax Earthshade and all of the bone colors. Agrax Earthshade really does seem to be like the old Devlin mud mixed with the old Bada Black, just a little bit. And when it goes on this rack art flesh, the result is a very dirty looking bone color. I think I've said it before that I when you when you paint bones on miniatures, there are different finishes, different looks that you can go for. And the first, the vampire counts one is very dark, gothic looking. You want to go for um, a lot of shadows and and pretty, you know, pretty washed out looking bone. You don't want your bone to end up looking really nicely highlighted unless you're going for a very specific, like maybe an arctic themed vampire counts or something. You Otherwise you want to go for dark and brooding and mysterious. So Badab Black used to work really well. And then, um, if you wanted Tomb Kings, let's do the bone over here. If you wanted Tomb Kings, then that was more of like a bleached, sun-blasted bone. So, so you would highlight that with sepia, the old griffin sepia, and that would give you more of a yellowed, like arid desert-looking bone finish, which worked really well for the Tomb Kings, but not as well for the vampire counts because the vampire counts was more like freshly buried, freshly dug up and uh, Sylvania is naturally like a more uh, marshy and just like the different environment is totally different from the you know the sun-kissed deserts of Kemri so or Nehekara I'm sorry Kemri was a city So now, because this new um, Agrax Earthshade has has hints of that old black, badab black color, it looks really well for vampire counts when you paint paint it onto vampire counts models um, bone sections. See, like this club looks really dark and really dirtied up, which is perfect. Perfect. So we're going to cut it there, players. As you can see, I also did the base. I figured I might as well get started on it. It'll make me feel more motivated to 
finish Igor up tomorrow. If you've got your own uh, Igor color scheme that you would like to share, please share in the comments. This um, Igor scheme is very non-standard Games Workshop. It's, it's not going to have that, that green, pale green kind of look to him that the Games Workshop ghouls do. I'm going for a very uh, raw and bloody and in-your-face kind of look. Kind of like my old uh, ghouls, for those of you who've seen my tutorial last year for Girl Painting's um, tutorial challenge, how to paint a ghoul. That's what this guy is going to kind of end up looking like. So, there you have it. I'm going to let all this dry. Tomorrow we're going to come back. We're going to work on um, washing the skin further with reds and purples and achieving different looks with it. Then we're going to highlight the fur, um, highlight various pieces like the bones. We're going to work on this guy up here, Lewis's little lookout at the top, and we're going to give Lewis and, and him a whole bunch of blood and guts. So thanks for watching. I'm really excited. I'm super happy to be painting not Lewis, what am I talking about? Igor. So happy to be painting Igor up finally. So, um, what do you say, Igor? Tell the nice people goodbye. Goodbye.